Hey Scotty, didn't we get a parcel somewhere? I'm waiting for that Modern Horizon 3 box. Oh, you cheeky you, you already have it. All right, let's open it. Hello everyone and welcome to another one of our Lazy Swim unboxing videos, a series where Scotty and I take the time to unbox products and read our cards, well then you know how good they are and if the product is truly worth your time and money. So grab your favorite drink, lay back and relax as we dive into this unboxing and I am your host Vlad, this is Scotty, thank you very much Scotty for this wonderful introduction and today we're having a look at something incredible, this is the collector booster box for Modern Horizons 3. This this baby here, so, so freaking expensive. I think it's uh, over 450 pounds at the moment. Um, so yeah, this thing is uh, just insane. And it's only really worth it for those people that A, are well loaded and uh, B, really, 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 are passionate about opening collector booths and uh, or uh, content creators like myself <laughs> either way here we go here we go so let's see where's this printer first so this was printed in the united states it wasn't done in japan that's really weird where they decide to print certain things like i think the past three four sets have been all collector boosters in japan this one's was done in the united states but whatever for whatever reason that's that it's a bit different than the play booster of course it's shiny but let's dive into it without further ado well, let's see how it stacks up and what beautiful cars we might get inside. I have no idea of what's inside as um, I have not had the time to create the usual guys that we usually create. Uh, we've been really busy with our own website at the moment. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I do this as a side project, as a hobby and uh, also to help the business. So it's whenever we can, we'll make it. But because of that, I have no idea what's inside, what the card versions are, and so on and so forth. So it's going to be very much a blind uh, going in, go uh, for it. Uh, I would reckon there's going to be some retro frames because we've seen retro frames. But other than that, I don't know if there's serialized. I don't know if there's, well, there's borderless, of course, but I don't know what else is going to be there. Anyway, well, let's take out these, whoa, okay, these booster packs and set them right here. Have a quick look at the box. Very beautiful um, illustration, quite beautiful. I don't know what the theme of the magma and the volcanoes are because even Najani was a background of a volcano so if anybody knows let us know in the comments down below I'm quite curious to find out other than that I'm wondering what the um, character is supposed to be what card this is supposed to be but um, yeah anyway let's dive in I have my trusty scissors because usually that these are not Japanese ones so it might be different it might be easier to open but oh wow well, yeah they are still Oh, no, they're fine. Okay, cool. So maybe no scissors needed. Maybe. We'll see. Okay. All right. So if they're not Japanese, then the orders should be as normal. So, yep, we have the comments here. We have the foils. Oh, the, the texture feel of United States printed cards is so weird. So strange. Okay, so we have four of the commons first. Then we have one, two, three uncommons. So this is one of the flip cards. I wonder if it's going to be at least one of those. Then we have... Of course, the full art land. Let me organize this in a little bit. Full art land, sorry, I'm not trying to spoil. It's just a texture, it's so weird for me. Evolution witness, so this is the retro frame. Then we have Priest of Titania foil retro frame. Wow, this is going in a beautiful, beautiful uh, protector sleeve right away. And then we have, ooh, Echoes of Eternity foil. So this is a Kindred Enchantment that'll draw it costs six. If a triggered ability of a color spell you control or another colorless permanent control triggers that ability, triggers it on additional time. And whenever you cast a colorless spell, copy it, you may choose new targets for the copy. This is insane. This is such a good card. For, again, for the commander that blah, 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 so on and so forth. Yeah, this is Modern Horizons, Commander Horizons. Um, yeah, so this is insane for the um, the Eldrazi deck for sure. Um, 100% really good card. Then we have Angelic Aberration, which is an Eldrazi engine. Oh my God, look at that face. Wow, that's how I look in the morning. Ooh, we wow. Anyway, this is a commander card. It's a 4-4 four, four that costs 6. The Void Flying Vigilance has one and costs 1. Angelic Aberration enters the battlefield. You sacrifice a number of creatures, each with the base power or toughness, or 1 or less. And you create that many 4-4 four, four colorless Eldrazi angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance. Okay, cool. 
cool nice with the foothills more or less not gonna give too much away for the commander cards i will review every single deck don't worry so you'll have to wait for that uh but yeah that's not a bad card uh with the foothills so pay one sacrifice you know the fresh lines uh, amazing and uh, yeah this is boring <laughs> incredible and then we have oh flare cultivation also in a borderless, very beautiful. This is the first one time I'm seeing the green one, and that's just beautiful. Sorcery, and it uh, costs three. Uh, two green pips to sacrifice a known token green creature rather than play spells, cost, and then social library for up to two basic land cards. Reveal those cards, put one on the battlefield top and the other one in your hand, and shuffle. A little bit underwhelming compared to the other ones, but it's okay. And then we have. Ooh, Psychic Frog. <laughs> okay. When we come deals combat damage to player opponents, walk away, draw a card. And uh, yeah, this card, card, put a plus one, plus one counter on Psychic Frog. Is our three cards on Gary Vier. It gains flying. <laughs> That's cool. And uh, yeah, we have Frex and and a treasure right here that's a nice one retro frame and falls okay cool let's go on that wasn't a bad one got the wooded foothills and the echoes of eternity so i think those are pretty good cards to get um the echoes are, are pretty pretty good as a, as a card is i think it's really really card all right so we have the ravager the vexing bubble shrieking drake the reprint and then an island and an unstable amulet okay so we've seen this before yeah we've seen this before and then we have from uh, modern horizons 2 if i'm not mistaken so this has been the first of the reprints. Uh, tireless Provisioner 3-2, cost 3, land, form, and land, enters under the battlefield and control to create a food token or, or a treasure token. So very good for commander decks again. Ooh, Eladamri, Corvic Doll. So this is another beautiful mythic. 3-3 three, three, legendary creature elf warrior, cost 3 with 2 green pips. You may look at the top card of your library and anytime and you may cast creature spells on the top of your library at any time that's insane and that is so strong and then for one green tap tap two on top creature you control any else for example reveal a card from your hand or the top card of your library you may reveal a creature card if you reveal a creature card this way put it onto the battlefield activate only during your turn yeah okay the sneak attack uh, that's insane um that's a mythic so actually because this is a rare strain organ there you go and next we have localized destruction cost five sorcery you get one energy when you pay one or more energy if you do each creature you control with power or equal to the amount of the energy paid this way gains indestructible into the turn then you destroy all creatures so this is going to be part of the um, energy deck for sure and then we have the necro bloom okay it's two seven plant and the boreless um version you can see in here you can see there's somebody poor thing uh, it's a zombie i think uh so it's a plant it costs four with absent any cost, and whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you create a 0-1 green plant creature token if you control seven or more lands with different names. You get to create a 2-2 black zombie creature token instead, and land cards in your graveyard have dredge too. Okay, cool. So then we, I don't know, this one's gonna go here, I guess. It has so many versions. Okay, Roshin, we've seen you before. So this is here. Ooh, wow, Jet Medallion, that is beautiful. That is the borderless version foil of the gem medallion. That is just crazy. Wow. Um, I don't really know because I don't think this is actually borderless like that. I think this is a special kind of borderless. So I'm going to put it here and then an Eldrazi spawn. Um, yeah, that, that was great. That's cool. Granted, this was the hit of the pack, I think. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure. Still, the gem medallion might be worth something. Especially because it's foil. Um, I mean, it's a, again, commander card, commander card. You know, <laughs> so far, I've not seen a lot of modern cards. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, unless I'm wrong. Again, I don't play a lot of modern, so I might be completely wrong, but uh, it seems like it to me. Okay, Junk Diver, the plane, uh, snow covered waste, which is really nice. This is foil and also boardless. Wow, I wonder how rare that is. Uh, we've not seen this one before. Well, we've seen the normal snow cover way, so not this one. That's really cool. And then we have Warren Soul Trader. It's a 3-3 three, three cost, 3 pay one life. Sacrifice another creature, create a treasure token. Wow, that is a lot of value in here. That is really, really good value. You know, this could be a good modern card as well. This could be a good card overall. Very, very good card. Then we have Benthic Anomaly. 7-8 Eldrazi Serpent. It costs 7 Devoid. Whenever you cast a spell for each opponent, choose a creature that player controls. Create a token that's a copy of one of those creatures. Assess its power is equal to the, the total power of those creatures. Its toughness equals to the total toughness of these creatures. And it's a colorless Eldrazi creature. That is insane. Then we have Invert Polarity. 
It's an instant, it costs three with is it? And choose target spell, then flip a coin. If you win the flip, you gain control of the spell and you may choose new targets for it. If you lose a flip, you counter the spell. Eh, not bad. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, thank you. That is awesome. Uh, all right, uh, so that's uh, Emrakul, the world of new. We've seen him before, but this is the borderless version. Um, yet another borderless version, I would like to add. I think this is kind of like the Praetor version of the... Uh, yeah, it was in Phyrexial would be one. They had the Praetor version of the Praetors. So this is going to be similar version like that one. So there you go. Very beautiful. And I'm going to put him here. And then we have another for... Wow, mamma mia, Jesus. I'm, I'm not going to have enough space here. I'm going to have to make some... I'm going to move the commons and the uncommons out of the way. <laughs> to give a bit more space to the edge as well. And we've seen Kudo before, and then Servo and Zombie Army. Okay, cool. So I see it. I see quite a lot of versions here. All right, all right. So here we are. We open up, move away the commons, and that would be good. And we got a forest. It's really hard to Jolted Awake in the retro, and Monstrous Vortex in the retro, and then Eldrazi Linebreaker. And this is a 3-3 three, three that costs 3, and um, the Void Trample and begin combat in your turn. Attack a creature control, gains haste, and X 0 until the end of turn, where X is not a Drazi control. Very, very strong for a Drazi deck, of course. Then we have Porn the Undertaker. We've seen him before in the profile version. So, hey, 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 there you go, 6 in the profile version. Okay, cool. There you go. We have more and more profile versions now. And um, that's really, really nice. Uh, I've not seen six before, and I don't know if they're running six that haven't been divided. Anyway, six uh, cost three is a two, four, three folk legendary creature with reach as green. And whenever six attacks, mill three cards, you may pull a land card from among them into your hand as long as it's your turn. Uh, no land permanent cards in your graveyard have retrace. Very, very nice. Okay, so that's nice. And um, I'm gonna put you here. Then we have Flare Mouse in the retro border. Very beautiful in the retro, I'm not gonna lie. I love the. And then, hoo hoo hoo, another profile version of Felia, Exuberant Shepherd, the Corgi. We saw it before, but I'm gonna put you here. And then Forex. Okay, and then next up we have, let's see. I mean, that Emrakul is really nice. I'm um, not gonna lie. Who are we missing? I think we're missing one only of the... Okay, cool. So Mountain, sorry. Marionette Apprentice and the Retro. And then we have Jolted Awake Foil and Retro. And Orem's Chant, Reprint and Foil. Then Gluttonous Hellkite, which is a Dragon 3-3 that costs double X. And then John. And uh, whenever you cast a spell, each player sacrifices X creatures. Then Hellkite enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters for on it for each creature sacrificed this way. Wow. And has flying trample. Yeah, this can be huge. Then we have Amphibian Downpour and the extended art. So this is the first extended art that we actually see. Um, pretty sure. Uh, because, yep, that's the only standard art that we have here at the moment. So, yet again, I have to something on the side here. Then we have one Soul Trader and the um, beautiful Borderless art. So, I, this is going to go here in the... <laughs> okay. Right. So, this was the other one. There you go. Oma the Defiler, which is the Concept Eldrazi. This is what they're called, Concept Eldrazi, I remember now. Because the other ones were the Praetors, of course, the Praetor version. These are the Concept Eldrazi. So, this is a 7-7 seven, seven Eldrazi that costs 10. And when you cast the spell, target opponents also have the library run it up uh word a uh, sacrifice to permanence and yeah this is just an insane card we've seen it before we've opened two already so this is the third one we're insanely lucky and this is i think the rarest version bar any particular rare uh foiling that might be in this special version but anyway the concept version okay so we're still missing one i think but of the Eldrazi, but this is an insane unboxing so far. And then, I mean, that's that's crazy. And that's just the first half. That's just the first half. So much stuff inside. I'm not gonna lie. Anyway, all right, the comments. The uncommons, Swamp. Okay, then we have, oh, Strike It Rich with Flashback. Okay, from Modern Horizons 2, cool. And that's a list lot, I guess, a reprint. Then we have Ether Spike with the Retro Border, okay. And then we have Crab Abomination with the Normal Foil. And then we have Inversion Behemoth, which is a 2-9 cost foil drives at the beginning of your combat on your turn. Switch the power and toughness of each of any number of target creatures until the end of turn, becoming 9-2. <laughs> That's insane for Commander, I guess. Ooh, Sapphire Medallion. That is beautiful. 
that is a beautiful card in the borderless art oh my god that is gorgeous oh my god that is that is just beautiful and then we have arena glory as well in the borderless art but i don't think this is in the same this is just like a borderless land question mark but anyway we've seen arena glory before and oh <laughs> come on <laughs> That is, uh, yeah. Okay, that's three of them. Yeah, I mean, four of them. That's four Ulmogs. Take your pick. Take your pick, man. <laughs> no way. I apologize for the volume. But <laughs> holy guacamole. How is that even possible, man? That is just insane. That is incredible. I was just stopping here for a second. It looked like this foiling was a bit different, but I think it's just because of the colors on the card. Um, but yeah, anyway. Um, also, I've realized that that's probably the spot where this goes. And so I can put the extended art here. Yay. <laughs> wow, man. Ah, it's, no way. That's just incredible. Um, yeah, we got the old mugs for sure. Okay, so the commons and neon commons. And then we have a swamp, um, metastatic evangel, which is retro frame. And then we have tune the narrative, arena of glory in normal. And then Yoti, Moga ancient, which is a 2 4 elemental cost 4 with sinning. When this is battlefield, uh, and you create a 1 1 green forest, try a land creature token for each time you've cast your commander from command zone this game. And at the beginning of each combat, land creatures you control get plus X plus X until the end of turn where X is its power. Very strong in the right deck for commander. And then we have Fanatic of Ronas and Imscare in the retro and monumental henge in the um borderless foil and that's it i don't think they're the strongest of the lands but still it's pretty nice to see them okay up next after this we have four more so the that's just been insane another beautiful uh titania um but this time you can see the I was a saga symbol, so you might prefer this version over the other one. Either way, uh, it's beautiful. And then we get the forest, a tireless provisioner once more from Modern Horizons 2. Then we have Metastatic Evangel. Then we have Tamio, Inquisitive Student. Okay, this is another one of the flip planeswalkers. This is a legendary creature. It costs one blue. It's a zero three. When it attacks, you get to investigate. You create a clue. And when you draw your third card in turn, you exile her and then return her to the battlefield transformed under her own owner's control as Tamio Season Scholar, which is a planeswalker with two loyalty, and plus two until your next turn. Whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, it gets minus one, minus zero until the end of turn, then minus three return taking instant sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. If it's a green card, add one mana of any color, and then minus seven, you draw cards equal to the half of number of cards in your library. Round it up, you get an emblem with you have no maximum hand size. Uh, yeah, that's really cool in the right deck. Again, much a commander card, more so than anything else. This we have Siege Gang Lieutenant. Okay, so the last tenant is a 2 2 goblin and costs four. And at the beginning of combat in your turn, if you control commander, create two 1 1 red goblin creature tokens and they gain haste until the end of turn. And for two generic and sack a goblin, it deals one damage to any target. Okay, and then we have Genku in the profile, which we've seen before the flare of duplication which we've seen before but in the retro and then we have the primal prayers which we've also seen before but this is in the retro as well and then a forex and germ so that's done okay so i think now it's come down a little bit um yeah i think the only other strong card that we're missing well there's it's the flare of denial and the ugin sanctum i think with the land the ugin uh, land i think those are the only other two cards that we're really missing um that are you know quite significantly strong um other than that we've gotten pretty much ink <laughs> so there's that between all the unboxings of course i'm not talking about just unboxing okay consign to memory planes and again these cards are very very hard to get a move off oh that is cool now i like that the way that they do the retro of um yeah the eldrazi that's really nice because this color well colorless wasn't like this there, there was no colorless back then so that's really really cool um then we have hard evidence from, from modern rises to primal prayers once more list of quarry so this is a commander card you tap to add one generic is a desert a tap sack a creature add one mana of any color and for x and two tap sack a desert exile target creature card with mana value x from graveyard create a token as a copy of it except it's a four four black zombie and get to activate that only as a, as a sorcery oh we have the shifting woodland oh <laughs> what the hell <laughs> No way! 
Oh my god, that that is Ugi's Labyrinth that we were uh yeah, I was thinking Sanctum because it was the other card, but no, it's the Labyrinth. That's the one we were looking for. Um yeah, and it's them Borderless as well. So the Labyrinth is a land you can imprint on it. So whenever it enters battlefield, you exile a colorless card with mana value seven or greater from your hand. So any of the Eldrazi, for example, or then for for the other two, you tap to have one generic. If a card is exiled under it, instead you tap two, and then for tap, return the exile card to its owner's hand. So in Commander, of course, this is insane in a, in a Eldrazi deck, but in any other format that you can play this with, what it does is you protect a card for the long game, I mean, your opponent will know that it's there, but you protect it. It gives you uh, an ancient tomb without the drawback of the freaking ancient tomb. So that's insane. And then on top of that, you just bring it back whenever you want and you cast it. There you go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, this card is insane. Uh okay. I cannot believe this, guys. Holy f uh, um, I am speechless. Um, okay. So we got a regular one, a retro frame foil. Okay. <laughs> what is this? What is this? Oh my God. My name is Dioscopa Damage to a player creator treasure token is out top card for the Zyber until the end of the tournament cast that card you can dash him in. I mean, this is Ragavan. Um, for those who play modern, you know this card. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. That's, uh, I think we just reached um, the value of the box, guys. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what the ever loving? I'm happy I have this on camera. Nobody's ever gonna believe it otherwise, honestly. Holy, well, that's insane. I don't think every every box open is gonna be like this. I, I bet you anything because if it's anything like the Commander Masters, it is like, you know, you get either really lucky or really unlucky or in between. So uh, anyway, an island. Whew. Um, yeah, that's a that's a freaking foil Ragavan. The good one. Uh, hard evidence, yeah. Evolution Witness, Sylvan Safekeeper is a 1-1 one, one human wizard from Judgment. I haven't seen you in forever. Second land, target creature control gains shroud until the end of turn. Yeah. Cheering Dispatcher is a commander card. Okay, that is it. That is uh, the full shebang of the fetch lands, I think. I think there's none other than this one that we needed ourselves. Of course, this is the borderless one on top of that. So that's this, that is a flawless friend. A flare of fortitude. We just need the, the blue flare now. The retro frame and, woo, Hergast erupting Nolkite in the foil profile version. Okay, um, see, what does this guy do? It's a drowsy dragon, okay? So it has a, the void or as it, no, it doesn't say it has the void, but then again, it doesn't matter because it doesn't have any cost to cast that's red. So it's a nine and a six, six emerge for eight. So emerges, you um, exile, now you sack a creature that's already in play and then you pay the difference. Basically, I think up to six um, in their mana cost, and then it costs only two. And when you cast the spell, you exile your hand. If you do draw three cards, great to cast in a late game to get, draw an extra three cards, and then flying each creature spell you cast has emerged. The merge cost is equal to its mana cost. What? Fred, wow, that's that's insane. It's a commander card, of course, but that is just bonkers. Uh, for S in germ, okay. What the hell is this even? Even Steven. I've, 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 I'm just speechless. And we have two more booster packs to go. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And this pack, of course, doesn't just want to open at all and the normal way. Uh, tricky, whatever. That's okay. I don't know um, what's happening anymore. I've been hit uh, like the Looney Tunes with a mallet on my head. <laughs> the cars that we just pulled. Okay, we have a mountain. Um, tune the narrative and munitions Esper. So you can get a Modern Horizons 1 stuff too. Okay, so I'll just put in the Modern Horizons 2 pile for it. Then we have Genku in the normal foil. And then we have this the Restless. And this is in the Borderless profile version. And this is a commander card. We've seen this before in the normal version. So, oh, wow, that is a beautiful ruby medallion right there. Wow, that is gorgeous. That is a beautiful card right there. And then we have Harbinger of the Seas. Oh yeah, the blue moon. All right, no basic lands or islands. It's the blood moon, but with Merfolk and it's extended art. There, there you go. Where am I next in the dark? Where did I put it? And, uh, oh, Warren Soul Trader and Foil. Okay, cool. I think this is gonna be a cool card. So I think this is a great, great pull. And Harbinger of the Seas, wow. Okay, last pack. Here we go, here we go. 
Um, yeah, that's insane. Okay, so the last pack. Here we go. Good luck to us. Well, I mean, we've already done it all. So that does that. Um, oh, snow cover waste and the normal foil version. Very beautiful still. And we have a forest. Abiding Grace from Motorizers 2. Galvanic Discharge. Oh, Flare Denial. There you go. That's it. Bingo. <laughs> we have all of them. Flare Denial. You may sacrifice non talking blue creature rather than pay this spell's cost counter target spell. Um, there you go. That's the one that we needed. And then we have Tarmogor's Nest. Okay. You get to create a Tarmogor if you enchant a land. Uh, yeah. Uh, very strong. I think we've seen it before. Either way, it's a very strong one. And then we have Abstruse Appropriation. It's an instant with the Void and course four with Ores of Exile Tiger. No land permit. You may cast that card for as long as it is. Means Exile. You may spin colors mana. As a mana mana color cast a spell. That's insane. That is just an amazing, amazing removal. That's just incredible. Sorry, I'm not trying to go ahead. Now we have, oh, wow, subtlety. Okay, so yeah, of course it makes sense. If you can reprint Ravagon, you're gonna reprint subtlety as well. Um, so I'll take that. Very, very beautiful card. And the last one is some Windswept Heath Foil. There you go. Extended, no, well, yeah, extended art, yep. Not poor less, this is a standard art. Um, yeah, that's that's that. I just realized um, while I'm looking here that, yeah, these cards, some of them were boreless. So the Floodish Trend, the Whitsuit Heath, um, as well, I think it was the Wooded Foothills. Yeah, the Wooded Foothills as well were uh, boreless. Extended, sorry, not boreless. So these would have to go there. Either way, that was the most insane unboxing i think i've ever done and this tops pulling the mana crypt from the collectors of the lost cameras of excellent because i mean um yeah we managed to pull basically everything that we wanted and more um so just to recap give me a sec we've pulled emrakul and olamog and olamog and these are four and so there's that and this one is the um edge four then we've gotten the Hergast, which I think is another important card. Then we've gotten a Flood of Strand with Foothills and the Harbinger and Windswept. So that's bingo. Then we had, not joking, Subtlety and Ragavan Foil. The Subtlety not foil, but the Ragavan is. Uh, Sun Shifting Woodland and Monumental Henge and Arena of Glory. Then what did we get here? We got a lot of cool extended, um, well, I think it's boardless art. This is what they call boardless art. Um, beautiful cards, including a jet medallion and the Flare Cultivation. Flare Cultivation is not as strong as the Flare of Denial, but that's fine. We still got a Flare of Denial. We got um, Il Damri and the normal uh, Mythic. I don't know that there's anything else that was in a normal Mythic. Um, then a plethora of other you know, cool cards for Commander and some retro frame cards as well here, uh, including the, the black flare. So that's it. This was our unboxing. Um, oh yeah, by the way, uh, yeah, completely did not forget about the Ugin's Labyrinth, boreless, whatever. <laughs> this was insane, guys. Uh, this was the luckiest unboxing. As I said, um, is it worth it? I mean, this one was worth it for us, but you gotta remember the price point is 450. It's almost half a grand. Okay, half a grand of uh, half a thousand pounds of a box that costs Wizard of the Coast and Masbro the same amount to print as every other box and so on and so forth, right? So with that in mind, uh, do you risk it or not? You know, as I said, it's great for content creators to pull this kind of stuff. And it's okay if you have the, the liquidity for it. You know, if you have the cash in the end, you your choice, you do it. But if you really, really want um, some card specifically is best not to risk it we got really lucky uh, i i think we got extremely lucky we could have gotten very unlucky like we did in other uh, collectors unboxings where nothing happened like for example in the murders of kind of manner um so it's very much a chance game and you don't want to risk it unless you can um so that's my gist for this is we were extremely lucky and yes it was worth it for us but be careful for you all right so with that out of the way, <laughs> leave a like if you like the video. <laughs> Let us know in the comments down below what you think about this unboxing because that was crazy. Um, if you like what we do and you want to support us a little bit, it really helps us immensely if you could subscribe because it does help much channels like ours a lot. And um, yeah, that's it for this unboxing. We'll see you in the next ones where we will unbox and review every single commander deck as well. We go into depth in those reviews. So we actually go and explain you the cast that we will make, uh, the good cards 
the back cards and synergy with commander so in all in all score it at the end of it so if you're interested in that make sure to subscribe and stick around on the channel and other than that uh, from scott and i we wish you a lovely day a blessed day be good be kind and we'll see you in the next one bye